Look at this. To our south, an EF4 tornado damaged or destroyed 1,400 homes. I made a new friend. The vendor over at Cousin Subs lent me his infrared thermometer. This actually shows the temperature on the surface. I wanted to show you what we were looking at tonight. This is the completed tally board. Now, when you look at this, it's not sophisticated. You can tell these ballots were counted by hand. They were written on this board by hand. And I know people may be wondering, so I want to point out, Shannon is not an anomaly. Mm -hmm. She really is the norm at Holly House. It is literally a tale of two cities here on the Wisconsin River. We are live in Sauk City, but you drive one mile up Water Street and you are in Prairie de Sac. And this is the big show. These kids spend all year working on their projects. John, 29-year-old Nathan Middleton made his first appearance in court today, and we learn new details in this disturbing case. Paul Smith's life has long been about the number two. He's been an officer in two departments. He served two years with the L.A. County Sheriff before moving back to his hometown and joining the Madison Police Department. Two decades ago, he pulled the trigger in two officer-involved shootings in Madison, 22 months, less than two years apart, killing two suspects. July 1992, Paul's rookie year in Madison. I hear somebody over there has got a knife too. He responds to an apartment on East Washington Avenue where a suspect has brutally beaten and raped a woman and is now threatening officers with a knife. See where the hallway narrows down here? Literally all you could see was the whites of his eyes. He was kicking and hitting the walls and screaming. <laughs> Somebody's over there yelling, shoot me. Shoot me, shoot me. And they call him nuts over there. This is when I scream and then he runs at me. I fell in front of him and then I fired three times. Well, there's been gunshots. Gunshots fired. Paul was cleared of any wrongdoing, but suddenly found himself in the spotlight. Officer Paul, Officer Smith, Paul Smith, rookie with less than a year on the last force. fatal shooting. Officer's actions were justified. Fatal shootings can devastate an officer's career. For Paul, less than two years later, it happened again. Go ahead, wearing. <laughs> May 1994, he and another officer are searching for a wanted Cuban immigrant near Brittingham Park. Running towards the Brittingham shelter. Paul finds the suspect and chases him down the railroad tracks. Here, on the railroad tracks. Officer Smith caught up with the suspect several hundred yards down the railroad tracks. That's where we were fighting. No, 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 no. I realized he's trying to get him a gun. A struggle began, and the two men rolled down this embankment. Over and grabbed that rock. What Smith was faced with was this. He picked it up above his head, and he was going to hit me in the head. Looming over his head. I punched him, and he dropped it. And then went for Smith's gun. He reached over and picked it up again. And raised the rock over his I head. from the ground and shot one round. Once again, Paul was cleared in the shooting, but this time the Latino community was outraged. Distrust of police officers was widespread after the infamous Rodney King incident. So people protested, claiming the shooting was racially motivated. My character and integrity were very important to me and to have it attacked, it was beyond hurtful, especially the community that I love. Little did he know, Paul had developed symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. He isolated himself and turned to alcohol to cope. I had to drink so I could fall asleep. If I drank enough, uh, the chances were less that I would have a nightmare. Paul fought to stay on the force. I did not want to leave that job. That job was who I was. When I went back out, that alert tone would go off. I, I'd get nauseous and my heart would start pounding. i find myself sitting there just praying, let it be on the other side of town, let it be on the other side of town. After that second shooting, I questioned my abilities. I came to believe that it was my fault and that if I had been a better officer, that, that it wouldn't have happened that way. Just two years after the second shooting, Paul Smith retired from law enforcement. I felt I had failed 
myself. I felt I failed my peers. I lost the one thing that gave meaning to my life. One more statistic loomed over him. Officers are two times more likely to kill themselves than be killed by a suspect. I didn't like myself. I felt I didn't deserve to even live. I found myself with my service weapon in my mouth and was going to leave this world. The decision to save his life and how he's now saving others when NBC 15 News at 10 continues. To many, this is the face of homelessness. Some spare change, man. Or this. People need this sight. A lot of us do. But in Dane County, the real face of homelessness is this. Chapter one. Our mama was the best mama in the whole wide world. This has almost been a year. It's almost gonna be a year from all of that. Charlene is a mother of three, and in 2011, they had nowhere to go. I didn't take the right steps to become self-sufficient. We used to come in through these doors. The Salvation Army's warming house became their emergency shelter. You might get accepted one night into warm ha warming house, you might not. The small space can only sleep 16 people in two rooms and the common area. One mattress here, one mattress here. After three months, they were accepted into family shelter. It was like, okay, this is gonna get better. I have somewhere to go every single night. But families can only stay for three months because of county funding. My 90 days ran out and I thought maybe by having two jobs that I was going to be able to get an apartment really quick and mm, no such luck. Again, with nowhere to go, Charlene and her kids doubled up with other families. This right here is Lucille. And some nights they slept here. I would recline these seats back and me and my daughter will have this front side and then when we make like a little bed in the back, and uh, that will be how we will sleep. After a year of waiting and following the homeless shelter system, Charlene got a call from a landlord. And he told me, hey, uh, I'm gonna give you the apartment. And I was like, oh yes, finally. I'm a firm believer that the answer and the solution to homelessness is not necessarily in shelter, but in affordable housing. Kristen Rosinski is the executive director of the Road Home Dane County. The organization provides emergency shelter for families, six different housing programs, and intensive case management. Family homelessness, it's almost invisible. It's the fastest growing subpopulation of homelessness are families with children. In 2012, the Road Home worked with 140 families, including Charlene's. The last thing that these families are, are unmotivated or not wanting change or lazy, whatever you want to call it, that's it couldn't be further from the truth. And the most vulnerable members of those families are most at risk. According to the Madison School District, this year alone, nearly 1,000 kids have been identified as homeless. I just can't imagine what it's like for those students to be in school when you don't know where you're even going to be that night, where you're going to get your next meal. Very small, very humble, but it's home. I think that stable housing has helped my kids. It's helped them a lot in school, that they know where they're going to come to and what's going to happen tomorrow. She did all sorts of stuff for us. I kind of like it a lot because we were just like jumping from place to place. And like, where, why can't we just stay in the same spot? It's been nine months and Charlene has no plans of ever going back, thanks to community support. It's helped me 100% because if I would not have had these people in my life and if I would not have had the resources, I would have gave up. This is my peace, me being able to come home. Charlene has big plans. She applied to the UW Odyssey Project and hopes to get a master's degree in social work. She says, John, she wants to give back to the community that has given yeah. so much to her and her children. And we're so glad they were able to turn things around. And I heard her mention some resources there. And the studies show that that's really the key, right, to have those kind of programs available. It is so important. The Road Home runs six different housing programs. Charlene's family is in rapid rehousing. It's a year-long program that pays for the security deposit and first month's rent, plus a small subsidy the rest of the year. 85% of families in the program maintain a home for a year or longer. Without it, that number falls to 37%.
One man is in custody following a rash of break-ins at a Madison oil change business. I want to point out, Shannon is not an anomaly. Mm -hmm. She really is the norm at Holly House. In fact, since 2010, 80% of the women wow. who've lived there have successfully moved into permanent housing. Meanwhile, Aprina's family and friends are struggling to cope with this loss. We go now to NBC 15's Kristen Mazur. We were talking about voter turnout earlier at 5 o'clock. The numbers were huge, and yet this race was called a lot earlier than I think almost all of us expected. Beautiful forecast, Carlos. Thanks. Hard to believe when you look at that, that somewhere else they're actually seeing snow. Take a look. Hard to believe the second day of fall brings snow to Colorado's high country. 16 men are behind bars in six Wisconsin counties after a sting targeting internet child sex predators. New at 10, a man from Madison is planning to drive to South America to see the World Cup and help kids along the way. We've been talking about it all week, and today it starts reductions to the food stamp program across the country. I took about a year, and he was 20 years older than me and kept saying, okay, Lee, if I'm on it, you be on it. And now I'm on it all the time.